It was a wonderful service. Uh, we have uh, the people enjoy the service. We have the pastor in the church, and we have Mr. Kalendo himself uh, preaching the gospel and telling the people to go out there and preach the gospel, winning more souls for Christ and believing in God as the Lord and their Savior. All right, yo, it's good to have you. Uh, we just came out of the church and we uh, attended the church for the first time and it was wonderful. I've never thought of seeing you preaching. And today we came to the church, we see you preaching to the people and even advising them to go into the world and preach the gospel to win more souls for Christ. That was wonderful. Uh, can you please tell us how this came about because a lot of people know you to be a politician they know you to be a business person but not much people get to know the Christian part of you how well you believe in God can you please let my, the people know? It all started uh, being a child my father had wanted for me to rather be a medical doctor because I was a physician assistant but growing up I wanted to satisfy my father so much I wanted to be a doctor but I realized I could not stand blood uh, if somebody cuts themselves, I'm not brave to look at uh, so that particular wound. So I ended up finding myself, uh, I changed, I wanted to be, uh, my second year in college, at first I still went to college, wanted to be a medical doctor. And the second year I had to switch to engineering college. And in, while they love to dress, this day I was dressed up in coat suit and the professor said, I don't think you want to, because I see some of you are in coat suits, uh, engineers do not wear coat suits. So I said, the man was speaking directly to me, so I said, oh, have it. It was add and drop. I had switched over to, I switched to uh, business college, and I did economics as my major. But in everything, I've only put God first, and then my wife, my mother would say, oh, I had dreams, this all dream, this all me preaching. Every time I would say, hey, that's not my calling, that's not my passion. But after my friend got drowned, uh, it touched me a great day. And before that, as I said, with my preaching, uh, we used to have parties here almost every Sunday, where all the beautiful, most of the beautiful girls from Morovia would track down here. The place used to be so packed. We were not praising God. It was like we were giving uh, uh, praises to the devil. They would come almost half naked, you understand? So I decided after that event, hey, it's time to get closer to God. And I started preaching. Uh, my mother encouraged me to it. Then I have a wife who loves, uh, she's, she preaches also, but she goes to another church. And it's it's wonderful to know that you, you so much believe in Christ. Uh, how long have you given your life to Christ? Well, from the time I was born, really, regardless of even all the bad things with day, going clubbing, in the end, there were days sometimes you go to the club, you are drunk, you come in, and sometimes you want to get involved in an accident, and you know, and you I end up packing off the road. Uh, read the 25, uh, 25, uh, uh, 23rd Psalm, or sometimes recite the Lord's Prayer, sometimes sleep there, which was dangerous. I got involved in accidents on three different occasions. I got involved in real major accidents. Accident. Yeah, yeah, you understand? And all those three accidents, God protected Spare me and spared my life. So I, I have changed after I start. Uh, I really, this is the second year since I started the preaching. I've changed greatly. I don't go hardly go to nightclub. It's been more than a year, you don't see me out, you understand? And I realize our life is more, we are more happier living our life than going to risk your life, going to a nightclub and getting drunk, and you're risking yourself to come home. And you could you could die. Thank you very much. I could see a lot of children yeah. around you, like it was said in the Bible that let little children come to me. I am surprised that you've got a lot of children coming to learn the Word of God from you. How are you able to achieve that? Uh, well, we, we started by going into the villages, talk, uh, into the village and talking to their uh, parents. I know you don't want to come to church, you can send the children. And we, we introduce them also every day, like now they are coming to give each one of them 50 like grand down. To encourage and them to as encourage children. Them to come. But let me tell you the good thing. Those children get 50 dollars, then they keep 10 hours and come with it as collection. That is wonderful. That a child would think that, oh, I got 50 dollars, but let me keep 10 hours for my collection. So it's working greatly, and we are so, they have their own Sunday school. The church we are building out there, they'll have their own place. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That was Mr. Calando we've just spoken with, and it's gonna be wonderful. We're still gonna have more clips, and we're gonna be talking to the family. You get to see more about them. This is the man that you've been hearing about. Of course, a lot of tags on him. And he was on radio a few days back 
to call on the government's attention to the situation that happens at the radio station. And it was something else people thought it was anti-government. Yeah. But fortunately, God intervened in the situation. They caught the person that did the deal and now everybody can see clearly that Mr. Kalendo is a straightforward person. He's not who they thought he is. Thank you very much. giant size and we've got smaller size over there this is the children's pool as you can see and this is adult pool on this side this is a compound where we used to fill up with a whole lot of librarians and the foreigners coming to enjoy themselves but fortunately the man has given his life to christ he's a man of god now and people don't want to come around i guess many people don't like hearing the word of god but they've got to try to learn listening to the word of god this is the second pool. We're going to the view of the sea. Like you can see, we've got another speedboat here. We've got another speedboat here. Then we've got 
another speedboat on this side. Then we've got little little hot where you can hang out, where we used to hang out when we have party here. Yeah, this is the snooker room as you can see. It's not active because there are no events ongoing. Is that a beach bike that you can ride and cruise around, you know, cruise around, have fun. Those are usually come around, have fun, we cruise bike, we move around, we feel at home, enjoy ourselves in Liberia. Of course, when you come to Liberia, Liberia is a place to be. Alright, I am presently sitting with that man that everybody has been hearing about his name. But it's so fortunate that this man is an extraordinary, simple man. Uh, we came into this compound and it's so unfortunate that we couldn't get no security with guns. A whole calendar. Can you please tell us? This name is an household name in Africa. But we got into your compound, no security with guns, no security with radio, communicating here and there. We heard that you are a very difficult man, but we seen the simplicity. Can you please tell us, who is this Kalando? Right. Trash Kalando, as you know, is a businessman, a Liberian businessman. I've been in business for over 27 years. And let me tell you, I, I decided to be simple because knowing where I come from, I was not born, my parents were not poor, neither rich came from a middle class family and God blessing me, I didn't see the need to want to live like the way the others when God blesses them, the way how they make it look like they are better than others. As a result, when I moved into this neighborhood about three years ago, uh, I welcomed all of them and we all we started interacting. Most of the staff that work here, the securities, the securities all uh, are from the town, so I'm a people's person. And when things got robbed during the election, yeah, we had armed men. We wrote to the police. The police gave us six armed officers that were here for more than a month. And after that, I told them that yeah, we felt everything was okay, so they should recall the officers, which they did. And we, as I said, to the dream of preaching. But in everything we do, I think the best character we have is Jesus Christ. Not you, 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 you've had, you've seen people with thousands of men, soldiers, and still people capture them. Oh yeah, people, oh yeah, you're right. People kill them. So every day of my life, I rather like to give my, I give my life to God. I lived here from the beginning of the war, from 1989 until the end of the war. Between that time, I went to the United States 16 times. Six times I decided I would live there permanently, but I always had that quiet voice I said, you go back home and go developed. So most of the things you see, my uh, gas stations, more especially when I, I started visiting Nigeria, I got inspired to have seen young Nigerians, the way how they developed their country. It inspired me a whole lot to come and do similar things in Liberia. We discovered that you have over 10 gas stations and you have a lot of Liberian employed working under your establishment. Yeah. Can you please give us an overview of how many Liberians is under the employment of okay, no, your establishment? We are between, I'm sure, the former and former, between 150 to 200 employees. That wow. includes the securities. Because just securities within the country, we have over 50 securities just mine in our properties. But what we did, we have outsourced some to uh, one of my friends, Abi Kurma. He has his own security, pilot Agency. security, yeah, so, yeah. All right, uh, like, how many gas stations do you have President, within Liberia? President, we own 10 gas stations, but we have bought land for 10 additional gas stations. And we have the tanks, the pumps, and uh, to construct additional 10. Information reaches that uh, Kalando got angry and want to relocate because of the government of today. Uh, how true was that? Well, uh, I 
do not want to relocate, but I believe maybe I have reached my zenith in Liberia. I, as an African, like any other African country, African country, it's open to all of us, oh, yeah. especially West African countries. So, I there's this Ghanaian. He's my mentor, although he's far older than me. He owns about 18 different types of businesses in Ghana. He's president in Liberia. He owns the RAJ Hotel, the GM Bank, Liberia Enterprise and Finance Corporation. He owns that. So this is somebody that inspires me a whole lot. I want to see what I can do in other African countries as well. And so as a result, not only that, maybe the mistake I made for which I think people are envious of me was to have put my name on almost most of the businesses. And I intentionally did it because I wanted my name to be a brand, you understand? And he has paid up because we started back in 1991. And between that time and now, God has blessed us tremendously. What I'm concerned about, how do we make this country prosper more? How do I provide more jobs? How do I help to impact or change the life of some other citizen or some other person from anywhere in the world? If you go to my office, well, I do not only have Liberians working for me, I also have Indians, I have Pakistanis working for me too. And they f make me relax, uh, they do their job, they send the report via email, I go through them, so I can stay anywhere in the world and still monitor my businesses in Liberia. Oh, yeah, that's maybe wonderful. it will help me greatly. Uh, maybe take some vacation off for two, three months, go and rest. Maybe my name would be <laughs> up <brother>. <laughs> But it's sad because in the <laughs> next, uh, one month, I, I've been constructing uh, a four-story, no, a four-story wow. building that's going to be branded Kailondo Plaza. Again, and so they're going to say all type of things <laughs> when, uh, when they see the glasses of that building, because uh, I think you compare that building to MP Liberia. Wow, and that's, that's the type of uh, uh, constructive jealousy I have within me. I like to envy good products, good product, good brands, brands. That made by multi-million companies, you understand? Then I, as an individual, go for it and try to make sure I succeed in doing it. You hear? You know, it's sad that the whole thing about this envy, you know, when it started, not only even before uh, I got into politics, there was a time when I opened a travel agency that was in 1994. I, have, I went to the U.S. in 1994 study about travel agency came in and opened it. I was very young, very tiny, but very, very aggressive. And we only had three travel agencies in the Republic the of Liberia. And being very young, very energetic, that's why before our president became uh, the world best, I took them almost everywhere until we almost qualified to go to the World Cup. It was my travel agency carried on the travel and tours that took the team, the national team, the Lone Star, to every country that they went. We qualified two times to go to the African Cup of Nations and once we almost went to the World Cup. So I have been working, and I continue to work. But now I'm so thankful to God my son is out of college, so he's helping me. My wife is highly educated, she's helping me. I had to bring him in, because finding reliable people to work for you also in our country is very, very difficult. People can't work for you, they want to be like you overnight, they want to own everything. In fact, they want to own more than what you own. <laughs> yeah. They can't work for you, they want to own we, everything overnight. We got into your compound and discover that is a very big mansion and we want to know this mansion is something worth five hundred thousand three million or yes. what can we quantify we, I think, it to I think, I think we spend up to 2.5 million in building everything united yeah. states dollars. Yeah, United dollars including my boats i have five boats the boats alone we excluding the boats the boats like this one alone this one cost me a hundred thousand US dollars Wow. It has a room, it has a kitchen, it has a living room. Beneath. Then, yeah, this one. Yeah. Then I have four other private boats. You understand? And my fleet of cars, this costs like 700,000, 750,000 US dollars. I have a Mercedes Audi, like 750,000 US dollars. I have a Jaguar that gone to service, it cost me 75,000. So, you see why the envy, most of the guys, they wonder how do you go, but hell, I want to go to the bank to talk to any banker about loan. I don't ask you for less than 1.5 million. Because of um, the kind of business you are into. The business I do, and sometimes, uh, like, I've just secured 1.7 million that I'm, I will pay in 90 days. That's the type of 
money yes. will turn around. In 90 days, you play 1.5 million, uh, you deposit it, you go for another 1.5 million. So now, in fact, I used to be, when my friend was alive, I remember there was this guy, uh, in 90 days, they gave me 6.5 million, and we pay in 6.5 uh, 6 million in 90 days. Wow, so, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that had a confidence built. Before Dan died, in one year, we paid 14.8 million United States dollar business. And you were able to pay within We the paid. Time. You understand? And and that's the that's the key. That's the key to wanting to be a successful businessman. If nobody can you cannot succeed in doing business without the banks. Just like Donald Trump. In fact, he filed for bankruptcy three times. But today he's it's a mother mother billion. <laughs> so yeah. If we we'll ask you, what are the three major things that you think retain you in business as a successful man? Just three major words. First and foremost is having faith in God. That's the first and foremost. Second, uh, being focused and being truthful to yourself and your business. Uh, being truthful, there are people who go take moon and they run away. Just like this, the small church, we gave 200,000 Labranas to start people up. 10,000 Labranas, today they were supposed to pay. Starting with the pastor, since he took the money, it's been three, more than one month, he stopped coming to church. For 10,000 Labranas, that's less than 100 US dollars. 